Daryl Clark. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this show on the road here. Again, we welcome you to the session. Uh, this is generally kind of an uh, overview of the process. And again, we have our standard host, Chuck Havlicek, myself, and Miss Lori. But we have a special guest, Daryl Clark, who's been with us before and uh, is basically kind of here to keep me honest, uh, Lori and I honest. Um, so what are we going to do today? Well. Um, what we're going to talk about are the general topics related to promoting your website. Now, it is not, we want to make sure, it is not on website design. Neither Lori nor I claim to be the artist or the designer. We're really talking more about how can you get people to your website, no matter what it is. And it's kind of like uh, our impression, and of course this is Daryl's business as a search engine optimization guru, but it's helping people find your website and so they know about it. And that's, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, we'll have some specific examples of things you can do. Uh, we'll talk about how you work on your website itself. We're going to lie a little bit because we will talk a little bit about some general topics or issues about a website. How do you know it's working for you? So that's kind of the topic that we're going to come through. Um, <clears throat> we, we hope to have some time at the end, and of course with Daryl setting in, uh, we, we have a little bit of, we have somebody with some expertise in this whole web area. We certainly also invite you, I know we've got a lot of people out there who are doing some web design, uh, as well as marketing responsibility for the system. Lori, let's start with a, with a show of hands. We didn't uh, do this yet, we haven't done it in a while, but uh, I am curious on a couple of cases. Number one, uh, Lori, ask people to raise their hand, uh, hit the raise hand button, if they are responsible for website design. This is going to be two questions. One, are you responsible for the design elements of your website? So raise your hand if you've got people there that do website design or if that's part of your hat. All righty. Let's wait a second. Go ahead and click the yellow hand once, please. Don't click it twice or it'll go down. It's <clears throat> kind of curious how many bona fide web designers we've got sitting out there. And you don't have to be a professional. If you've gone in and do some of your fiddling on your website, that counts. <clears throat> About 25% uh, of our friends Really? Here okay. Today. Now the next question is, how many of you out there do have a responsibility for, if you would, general marketing and promotion? And, and we'll let that be pretty wide open. If you do some marketing and promotion of any kind, <clears throat> go ahead and raise your hand again. And Lori, I think you need to close it and, and flip back and forth again. I'm all fair. I, I have a poll for that if you want. Oh, okay. Uh, well, let's hold that and then we'll, we'll go on a, a little bit here and we'll get to that. I forgot we had, we had that. So. Well, we're running it now. So we no, why? Well, very good. <laughs> Sorry about that. So if you would, I clicked the poll question thinking that's what you were looking yeah, okay, at. Okay, that's, that's fine. We've got our wires crossed a little bit. So if you would please just select one our folks have voted. So we'll give it another 10, 15 seconds <coughs> if we can't increase that. There we oh, go. that always makes a big difference. We're now up to about 75% of the folks There you go. Voted, there you go. So we'll give it another couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. Not there you go. Yeah. And I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. And I'll okay. share the results with you. And 69% of you said that the responsibility falls to your marketing person. Okay. At least nobody here said no one is responsible. There you go. Okay. <laughs> About 23% say they all do a little bit of stuff. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. All righty. Well, I think you need to, okay, I'm back on air here. Uh, selecting your URL. And, and um, one of the things that I want to get at, Often the case is that the URL is not something that you have some control over, but about that. Um, does your URL make sense with what you're trying to do? And I'm going to go ahead and jump over to a couple examples. Um, one of our customers, Forest Hills Public Service, they have created a URL called enjoylearning.com. 
<clears throat> and again, if you go to Forest Hills Public Schools, they have a typical uh, foresthills.k12.mi.us, but they've basically created a URL that allows them a shorter, recognizable, understandable URL that they can reference. And we'll talk about why that's important a little bit later. Another one closer to home is our own University for Man, or now UFM program here in Manhattan. And they've redone some work, and they've settled on a URL of Try UFM. <clears throat> and again, uh, the idea of coming up with a URL that is short, uh, meaningful, hopefully easy to remember, and uh, you can use it in all your promotions. Uh, and, and again, there's just not a lot of uh, craziness involved in that. But basically, um, you know, can you or have you tried? Now, I know a number of people here are with university or a college, and in that case, you've got to negotiate the politics of your branding person who is the institutional, I forget what they call them, institutional information person, you know, uh, College Information Center. But if you can get them to uh, work with you to get a URL, that would be great. Um, I do have a question, Lori, on the printing the URL, remove the www. What's the thought on that? Because I, I had not heard or thought of that before. Well, I, I talked to a couple folks who said that if you remove the www, it makes it shorter and the mind remembers it easier. Everybody by now knows that you need the www in front okay. of, okay. You know, or sometimes you don't even need that anymore. Uh, and that it just makes it easier for your mind to remember, rather like removing the one in front in of In front of the 800 number, 1-800, yeah. OK, all right, well, that's an idea. I have I've not tried that, and so we might see if people have had any action on that. While we're talking about URLs, let's kind of pause a second and see if there are any uh, questions. Uh, Daryl, you feel free to chime in if you've got any thoughts about URL designing for those people who have a chance to do that. Um, I do have a comment. Uh, and this is kind of advanced search engine stuff for people like me. Mm -hmm. uh, the Google and Yahoo and MSN like to rank URLs that have been in play for a while. They've been on the oh, web for a while. So when okay. you buy a new URL, it's very hard uh, to get rankings. Uh, normally, even it can take as long as a year, mm, uh, mm. even if it's tied into your um, university. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there are domain options, and uh, the best site for buying expired domains is snapnames.com. S A N P, snapnames.com, all one word. And you can look for uh, catchy URLs that might have ex that might be about to expire, and get ones that are already have some kind of uh, what they call link popularity and have been in play, and put those to work for you. And you'd find that uh, your likelihood of getting uh, traffic to that URL is a lot higher. If you, it's kind of a I don't know, I don't want to say sneaky approach, but it's... Well, you're basically buying some of the history that being on the web. And again, I, that's a good point for search engine optimization. If you're trying to get people to Google classes in, uh, in Manhattan, Kansas, and a, a URL that's been around a while uh, would be more, uh, you know, you've got a little bit more weight, I guess, in the SEO side. Yeah, um, yeah Lori, that's how about exactly it. You've got uh, getting a URL with history, yeah. if there's one available that meets your needs. Now, again, uh, if you had a URL that used to sell, uh, you know, uh, illicit drugs or, you know, X-rated movies, uh, d honestly, does the content of the previous owner affect you negatively on the buying secondhand, if you would? Well, not, not really, but obviously you'll, you'll, you'll want to look through uh, the type of name that it was and, uh, uh, you know, make sure that the kind of traffic that you you might be expecting from it would be more in line with uh, with your um, with your business goals. Sure. You can go to archive.org, I believe. I'm not sure if it's with an S. Hang on, and you can go look at what the site content used to be. Okay, and that uh, S or no S? Uh, uh, 
it is no s archive okay so it's archive singular dot org and we'll we'll add that to the uh to the powerpoint when we uh get on there in fact i'm going to go ahead and um do that in a second here when we get to the next screen. Lori, let me ask you if there's any discussion or buzz from the questions from the group at this point. There's not. Okay. There's let me there. ask a show of hands, Lori. Get ready again. Um, if you have created a separate URL, and most of our people are university types, if you are a university created a separate URL, would you raise your hand uh, actually, probably just type in the URL in the chat window and send it to Lori, and Lori can respond to that later, and we'll we'll move on. Uh, but yeah, type in the URL that you might have created if you do have a separate URL at your institution. So, um, all right, well let's move on to the next. And the idea, the next slide, and I'm going to add uh, Daryl's here. If you're looking for available URLs, and this is auction of used ones was snap names. Snap names, uh, did I get that? I didn't spell that right. Uh, S-N-A-P names.com. And then the other was uh, history. Archive.org. Is archive dot org. So there's a couple things to reference. But again, if you're trying to find a new one, uh, some places where you can search, and uh, I think those allow you to go in and put in a name and see if it's found or not, and you can see if it's available. Uh, but again, Daryl, good 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 thoughts on the uh, <clears throat> on the available the idea of another way to pick up some URLs. Um, anybody got a URL they've done, Lori? Yeah, no. Terry has a nice one. It's trainnd.com. Ah, North very good. Dakota. Yeah, in North Dakota. This is the North Dakota uh, State School of Science, and they have trainnd.com. And again, that's a great way. Uh, how long has that been on? I'd be curious. Um, but again, a great way to come up with a meaningful name. It's short, easy to remember, and it's one you can promote the heck out of. Um, well, moving on now. Again, have ACEWEB, and Lori, do we have an ACEWEB question on how many people here have ACEWEB? We do not. We have Let's no do a show of hands. Raise your hand if you're running ACEWEB or SDC Web. I think Steve was going to sign on from Houston. Just give us a quick show of hands. How many of you actually are running ACEWEB, which is the student manager, of course, web registration mode? About half the people here today have been Good. running. Good. Well, and again, uh, there are some new ones coming on board here. And again, whenever you're putting together something new, offering a new service, great, great time to really promote the heck out of your URL. <clears throat> uh, specific. I'm going to actually go back and um, let me let me get back to uh, the uh, browser. Uh, we talked about uh, the shortcut, uh, the renamed uh, URLs for Forest Hills and University for Man. Most colleges and universities are like Augusta State, where you've got, uh, you go to the, the campus site, and then you try to find continuing ed. Well, I'm not sure if this is new or not, but I just noticed that they now have, I didn't think they used to have this, but there is a link on the home page to continuing ed which then will take you into the continuing ed uh, home, online registration, information about their kids' university, et cetera, et cetera. So that's only two clicks and they're in, actually one click they're in from the main page at the university to continuing ed. And uh, this, again, is politics for you within a, a, a university See if you can get that link from the home page directly to <clears throat> your URL. I, I don't know, Daryl, from the standpoint of web engines, SEO, whether your link being closer to the front is better. I'm assuming it is on a previous instance like that. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't, not, not necessarily from an SEO standpoint, I mean, if the if the link is in a text link, so it said continuing education, and perhaps uh, your city name, uh, then it would definitely boost your.
your rankings at the search engines. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> some specific ideas. Now we're getting down to let's get some ideas. And again, I as we kind of said at the beginning, this is really a lot of this stuff. You might say it's duh. It's stuff that well, of course we know how to do this. The question is, are you doing it? And again, I think the I don't have a cute uh, the inspiration versus. Uh, the, the definition of genius, you know, one part inspiration and 99 parts perspiration. And the idea of the farmer who knew how to farm already better than he was doing. Uh, there are things we know we ought to do. It's just getting it done. And uh, that will help, help get things going. <clears throat> Again, when you have your URL, and hopefully you've tried to get, and like Terry at North Dakota, trainnd.com. You're going to want that URL every place you can find it. Catalog pages, <clears throat> so that when you look at a catalog, and we're going to just jump to uh, Augusta, and we're going to test. I don't think we've got, I don't think we've got um, <clears throat> Denise setting in on this. So we'll go in and just look at her catalog here, and see whether or not we've got. Okay, there's page one. Keep on going. Down to the bottom of the, there it is. Click on www.ced.org.edu. So they are doing that. They are putting that on each page. So huzzah to, um, to Denise at Augusta. Business cards, obviously the normal things. Fax cover sheets. Get it in your email signature. If you've got an answering machine, uh, this is something that Lori had, had noted, that a lot of times when you get an answering machine or your out of office message, uh, you know, I'm sorry, it's after 5 o'clock or offices are closed, if you've got a web page, put the URL reference. Uh, if you want to register, see our website, www.ced.aug.edu. <clears throat> put the web uh, site for your CE programs on your answering machine message. Uh, and again, I don't know who it was, Lori, that you first caught that from. A lot right. of folks. A lot of folks, yeah. But a great uh, way, because people are calling you after hours, and uh, they're wanting something now. You can send them to the web and get them going. Um, every piece of marketing you do, on the door, and you're saying on the door of the office. Is that right, Lori? On the door of the office. On the close, they should have a plan B. Right, right. If the door is locked for lunch or it's 5 o'clock, 5.01, and someone's walking by, you put that in. Registration confirmations, badges and handouts. Um, I'm not quite sure I go all the way to badges because that means they're already there, but the idea if it's a take-home, handouts definitely <clears throat> because that's something that would be a keeper uh, to make sure that's on there. Uh, email your URL. Uh, again, um, especially if you're doing something new, you got a new website, you've got some reason to promote something, um, put that URL, uh, send it as an email, uh, your, your website, to companies in your database. Send it to your students. Send it to contacts. Uh, do uh, for college, if you've got a, a campus environment, Send it to your campus listserv. Uh, some schools allow you to do that. Put it in the campus newsletter. Uh, announce it, uh, publish it, press release it in the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and again, use your email module. For those of you that have the email module, you can certainly blast uh, an email. Uh, this is uh, an option. You can do the standard, just general blast email to welcome people to a website. This is an example of the Merge Mail tool, which allows you to generate a personalized letter. And one of the functions with it, if you have AceWeb, you can use the Show Up Class function. And this is a, the, an example of the, uh, <clears throat> of, of the Show Up Class template. Um, with email template, you can have an introduction, introductory paragraph. Hello, Chuck. The following is a list of courses offered by Aceware, uh, the show up class function. And if you add the ID number of the individual person as part of the setup for this, it will actually only display in this email to Chuck 
classes that match his interest code. And what that means is when you're sending an email out to a particular student, it will match the ID number and the interest codes and only show classes that are in the topic area of stuff that he said at one point he's interested in. I'm curious, uh, has anyone there done a merge mail with the show up class option to try to promote classes tied to an individual's interest? Let's do a show of hands on that. Raise your hand if you've ever done uh, merge mail uh, and you've used the uh, show up class function. That might be a topic for future discussion. Yeah, and I was going to say, in, in okay, I'm sorry, Lori. We're getting less than ten percent. Okay, yeah, well, I, that, that's fairly advanced, so that doesn't surprise me that we don't have lots of people. Daryl, how do you your comments maybe going back to the idea of the general promotion of the of the website? How do you how do you get the word out on that? And obviously, search engine optimization is a topic we'll refer back to your previous session. But any other thoughts on that? Well, I think the only the key thing is a lot of people the URL at the bottom of a of a, a printout or something, and the people tend to read left to right, obviously uh, from our uh, our culture and uh, the eye catching and eye track tracking zones are normally in the uh, upper left hand side, top margins, and to the right, but upper left hand side and center are the, the hottest eye tracking zone. So if you want to expose your uh, URL to the most eyeballs, um, even on the web and print media, I, I recommend uh, near, near the top and in the center uh, and making sure that you have a call to action. Uh, you know, uh, go to, uh, click here, uh, whichever it is. If it's click here, obviously it should be a, on a web. Right. And then to the, you know, uh, just skipping back to your email marketing, it's, I don't know the exact statistics off the top of my head, but uh, significantly easier to get somebody who's already been a loyal customer uh, to register for another course than it is to capture uh, a new prospect. Sure, sure. So That's working. Yeah, good point. Yeah. yeah. I think that uh, people really should, uh, you know, you've got a, a very robust email marketing system there, and... Uh, uh, people who use your system should really learn how to take advantage of that because they'll find it a really great uh, source of, uh, of of continuing revenue. Yeah, follow up, trying to get that lifetime value of that student in there. So, okay, so we talked about the uh, email. Uh, it, it blend your blend your system. A lot of times, um, a lot of times, I think uh, people are seduced by the electronic marketing, electronic marketing, and they forget about some of the old standbys. Now, I, I know that post uh, postal rates are going up in next month. I just saw in the in the in the post office two cents more first of May, something like that. But still, uh, postcards are relatively inexpensive. You can get postcards from one eight hundred postcards or whatever. Uh, and, and use it as a way to follow up or in concert with uh, a website announcement, something that you is special. Uh, or if you're trying to reach out to a new audience that you might not have their emails for, uh, you know, you can get them to come to the website. Now, if you do that, one of the things I would certainly say is that you should, uh, let me try to close this, here we go. Um, is that you want to try? Oh, here we go. You want to try to be a, a, add on the mailing list, and I, and I I'm picking on Denise here, but request a catalog or to say uh, add your name to the mailing list so that uh, this kind of a response is going to get the email address of the party who sends that in, and of course then uh, you can add that to your promotional list for for follow up marketing. So that whole idea, and as Daryl had said, a call to action. Ask them, go to the website, sign up for your announcement list, tell us what you're interested in, do your customer service. Ask your customers what they would like to offer. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, would you like fish or chicken? You know, you want steak or, 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 or meatloaf or fried squash, you know, that you need to ask them what they want. Okay, uh, press releases, and I think... 
Lori's comment there is a lot of times with print media now being beat on an old-fashioned press release to the local newspaper uh, might get a lot more attention perhaps than before because if they can talk about local stuff, <laughs> they might be more happy to register it or to put it on. Lori, any other thoughts or comments on that? Consistently in my area, we found that the press releases and the local calendar, the community calendar that came out on the Saturday newspaper were better read than the ads that we purchased, although well, we had to purchase ads occasionally to get the community calendar and the press release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of a scratching back thing. Obviously, if <clears throat> you're not doing any business advertising-wise with a local newspaper, they want, may not be quite as helpful to you as when you give them a little bit of juice along the way. So, Now, um, the other thing, well, have, let's move on here. Billboards and posters, and again, the idea of uh, uh, billboards on the side of the road, um, I don't know. I'm curious, uh, has anybody in our audience used a billboard, a, um, let's, let's just say, highway billboard for a promotion program, for a given class or a given broad program? Raise your hand if you have. We're going to give you 10 seconds. Chuck, this is Daryl. When you have a chance yeah. to go back to press releases, I have one thing to add, too. Okay, go ahead while people are raising their hand about that uh, billboard. Go ahead. Uh, a free uh, press release service that uh, you can use is prlog.org. Hang, hang on a second. We'll get that in. And so the idea is free press release service here. They, not, they do electronic press releases all across the web, prlog.org. Prlog.org. Plus, when you do your release, they give you a, they give you a copy of it in PDF right after you've published really? it. Really? Really? Uh, and all of that is free. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, that is um, a good point. We have added that to our file. So prlog.org, and that will give you some help with that. And... Um, I will. I, I didn't know about that. See, there, there you go. We've, we've got your nickels worth already. Lori, what's our billboard uh, result? We have four people who have uh, oh? used a billboard. Okay, okay. Give me any feedback on how. Yeah, I well, on the results of that. And, and uh, mail a giveaway to Top Dogs. And again, I love the logo here, or the image, but the idea is that in Student Manager, you guys know that you can go to statistics, names, performance sorting, you can get the top 10 records, the top 100 records, the top 500 records based on money, courses, whatever. You could generate a list of these people, a mailing list, an email list, and do something for them. Uh, give them a special deal uh, if they come and register online, whether you do a coupon, uh, again, promotions to drive people to your web. Uh, you know, uh, this is coupons. Ace Web supports coupons. You can put in. A, uh, you can put have a coupon program. I know SMU does a lot of this. I don't know if anybody else in this group does, or if Lindsay's signed in today. Uh, but I know they do a lot of things with coupons. I don't know how much action they get, but again, well, I was going to say earlier, part of the issue is creating the buzz, creating a reason why people come to your website. Well, presumably it's because they want to take a class, but it's kind of like, what's your excuse to yell and holler and shout, uh, wave something in front of them that's different than what you've done before? Um, and again, there's nothing bad about just steady and slow and sure, but coming up with something new every once in a while just to kind of shake up the pot, stir the pot, I guess. Uh, is, is a way to, to get that going. Any other thoughts on this idea of, again, coupons, discounts, um, Lori or Daryl? Well, I just want to add, I mean, it's, it's kind of standard marketing 101. You have, uh, in the older uh, parlance, it was four P's of marketing, uh, price, uh, product, place, and promotion. And many people leave out the promotion aspect, and they only focus on, uh, price, product, and place. Right. So what you're talking about here is the distinct element of promotion, mm -hmm. and uh, that should vary uh, in different time frames. Sure. 
Sure. Okay. Well, and, and again, that, that, that's back to the old basic marketing component. Um, online kind of thing. Again, uh, pay-per-click, uh, we're doing some experimentation with Aceware, and Daryl's helping us out with that on some pay-per-click. Uh, local ad links, uh, Craigslist, local service review, I don't know. I'm trying to think uh, uh, with, uh, I'm curious, uh, let's do a pop-up of hands here again. For general marketing of classes, how many people do some, uh, that's my little reminder here, do Craigslist announcements uh, or put their classes or some of their classes on Craigslist? Show of hands. Raise them, raise them if you ever use Craigslist to promote classes or programs within your unit there. We'll give you a five count. You guys ought to be getting good at this. Come on. Five. Four, uh, I was up at Ochea to bit of talk about people using Twitter. For promotion of classes. For promotion of classes, yeah. Huh. Huh. Uh, Daryl, any other, uh, besides, I'm trying to think of the local service review sites. Any? Yeah, well, for local stuff, it's, it's, it's somewhat difficult, you know. Uh, you know, as uh, you just mentioned, Twitter is a, a good one. Uh, obviously, Facebook is a very uh, good source uh, if you build a network. And then another one of my favorite social networking sites is StumbleUpon. Huh, so if now you create that... a profile at StumbleUpon and you build a network of friends, uh, they will promote your courses uh, for you. StumbleUponOrg.com. And then, of course, with Facebook and Twitter. Um, one of the ones that I just hit into is um, a group called Teach, um, Teach to You uh, out of Seattle. And I had not run into this group before. And I don't know whether I've got, uh, uh, see if I can www.teach. While you look for the talk. Um, Teach Street, there it is. Uh, teachstreet.com, and they're a new startup out of the Seattle area, but um, they're looking at doing some things with basically trying to connect uh, classes, teachers, articles. I know Colorado Free U and Denver, they're only in certain cities right now, um, Denver, Portland, San Francisco, Seattle, uh, but that's an interesting, it's a brand new startup, Teach Street that uh, I know is starting to do uh, some things in this area. Go ahead, Lori. Uh, in Georgia, we have something called kudzu.com. Oh, yeah. Which started out recommending like handymen and mechanics and that sort of thing because we were having rather a problem with that here and people wanted recommendations and references. And kudzu now recommends everything and anything. <laughs> So a positive review on Kudzu about your programs can really generate a lot of interest. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Anybody uh, got any suggestions that they've used locally that they might want to send in? If so, uh, shoot it to Lori, and I'll try to jump back, and we'll add this here online as we go. Uh, other chatter or things going on on the chat list there, Lori? Uh, stuff I'd like to hold till the end. But yeah. Okay, all right. External signs, and again, uh, back to uh, visual stuff that is not electronic. <laughs> Although, again, campus digital signs. If you've got a campus with one of those, uh, you know, LED signs, and you can get permission or figure out a way to get your website on that to promote upcoming programs, absolutely uh, get on the stick and do that. Um, here's one that's old school. Uh, have somebody write a note. Uh, and again, this is probably something that you would do to like parties. If you've got a website and uh, you want to, you've got the, the you know directors of uh, training for school, for programs, the local uh, principal at a high school, um, counselor at a uh, at a YMCA. If you've got some key people, uh, a little jot a note to them. Uh, say, hey, you know, but writing you an old-fashioned way, how you doing, hope you're well, wanted to let you know about our new website. And again, that personal touch is really you know, unusual and appreciated by folks. Uh, promotional giveaways, and certainly this is, this is back to what Daryl said, promotion. Lots of different ways to do it, and it's in the perspiration side that this happens. 
uh, sign it up for the booth at the local mall, at the community fair, chamber events, uh, local county fair. Uh, send it to PTA meetings. Send it to chamber meetings. Send it to Lions Club, uh, Rotary. Uh, you know, give something to that. And uh, again, the idea is adding your URL to everything. Uh, well, almost everything over here. So. Uh, again, put that on there. That's how people are going to find your site. Throw a party. And I think this is something that um, I, there are groups that have had an actual party come in for coffee donuts and we'll celebrate our website and meet some instructors. And of course, things like cocktail napkins, I suppose, uh, with the uh, URL on it or the URL printed or even old school. Uh, you print the URL on a uh, piece of uh, mailing label and, and uh, stick it on your plastic drink cup, you know. So, Lori, any other thoughts on the party side of things? I love your party guy, by the way. <laughs> well, you worked hard on your website. Celebrate <laughs> you it, you know. Yeah. Let, it, let it go yeah. out there and be glad you're done. There you go. There you go. And I guess that's, uh, I suppose what you could do is even even for your staff, if you don't want to invite in the customers or the students, party amongst yourselves because, again, that is an achievement to be able to get that out. Uh, keep it strong. And again, I think as, as far as what we're talking about here is make sure that you do uh, keep your website up to date uh, you, you know, with things like Spotlight on Customers. We have, of course, a Customer Spotlight. And I'd be remiss if I didn't, if I didn't get to it and say, uh, if you haven't seen the Customer Spotlight, uh, every month or so, Lori, we has a new one. Uh, this week, it's on. Uh, this month, it's Clayton State, and we have a chance to learn a little bit about the customer, what they're working with Aceware, how they're working uh, the system. We've got path spotlights up here, and again, look at those. Maybe you've got somebody there who's doing the same kind of work you are, and you can go in and uh, give them a call and uh, share some ideas, thoughts, pick their brain about how that might help your program. Uh, spotlight instructors. If you've got uh, special instructors, uh, instructor of the week, uh, again, some reason to get people there. Uh, once you let an instructor know they're going to be spotlighted, if they're good, they're going to want to send a note out to all of their contacts about the link that's on the University of Blah website. They're going to get more action, people coming to the site and hopefully get uh, some action. Link to and from instructor pages. Now, talk to me, Lori, about another thought about the instructor side of things. Well, lots of times your instructors have really interesting pages, and it helps them to build the rapport with the student before the student even gets there. OK, so you're really saying, like, if, if, if I'm Joe instructor and I have my own business doing such and such, that a link from that instructor page if they teach for you to link over to the university's website where they can enroll in the classes. Right, and get yeah. an instructor to put on the website, I offer classes through the university. Of so-and-so, and then the link to that. Right, and I think that, uh, Daryl, you can, you can talk about that and what that does for you on your SEO side. I'm sorry, Chuck, I just missed that part. No, I, we're talking about linking. Uh, if instructors for your classes, you can get the instructors to put a link on their page, like their private website, to the university website where they're teaching the class, the idea of cross-links or referred sorry links. Sorry about that. I was looking for a URL uh, no. reference. Um, yeah, I, if, if they link to you using words or phrases that describe your products or service, so the hyperlink, the anchor text is, um, accounting fundamentals course, uh, Lawrence, Kansas. Then you get Google, Yahoo, and MSN ranking points for any phrase that is contained in the hyperlink to your URL. Okay. So you take full advantage. You want it to be descriptive, but you want the words linking to the URL to be very specific about the content. So if you just put um, uh, accounting fundamentals course in that link to the URL, the, you would you would not be able to compete with other groups across the web for accounting fundamentals course. But if accounting fundamentals course Lawrence, Kansas, you might end up with a number one ranking at Google with just a couple of links into your URL using those words or phrases. 
Now, again, and the idea is that most of our customers, I think, really are primarily locally running programs. And so that idea of getting a high rank when you are linking to a local area is important. So good. OK, well, I think we're getting close here uh, to some of the questions. And I, Lori appears to have a lot. The idea of visitors book, bookmarking the site, and certainly, again, it's kind of ask them for something to do, whether they register for a class, bookmark it to return, of, of send this site to a friend. You know, the idea of forward this information. Uh, of course, Ace Web allows you to do tell a friend, and so the idea of referencing this link to other people. Um, use all your resources. Again, uh, this is again in the perspiration side. Uh, do you want to add video of upcoming classes? Uh, do you have somebody who's a, a videographer who could shoot a video and you could put a little clip? Link to a YouTube, uh, post that video on YouTube, I suppose. I don't know if anybody's done that for classes. Uh, little short how-to videos, uh, that would be the idea of samples. Uh, it gives your website some activity and also it gives you a reason to have people come back. Uh, do all the meta tags, and Daryl mentioned that. And again, uh, back to the meta tags, and we're going to we're going to come back to that again. But one of the things that, of course, you're all as a Aceware user with a support agreement are able to get to is the webinar archive. And under the webinar archives, we have the archived copy of uh, Daryl's session that he did earlier this year on search engine optimization. Uh, and again, uh, that's going to be for users only. We're going to be putting pretty much all of these behind the, the user door. But it's still going to be open until the first of the month. And a great resource for you to uh, learn about how to take advantage of some of the search engine stuff. Answering email questions. A lot of times there is a for information, and it's a generic box, info at aceware.com, info at NorthDakota.edu. Whoever's responsible for that email box, make sure they're paying attention to it. Uh, it's kind of like you invite people to ask you a question and no one ever responds is obviously not exactly the best customer support. Uh, website, keeping it up to date, uh, making sure that you take the webinars off that have been two weeks old, uh, make sure you take the courses off that are no longer active. Of course, if you're using AceWeb, uh, you automatically have the option to have the course drop after so many days, and you can control that. But again, probably nothing is, uh, I don't know if what's worse, not having a website or having a website that is old and outdated, and you look at it and you say, oh my gosh, this is mashed potatoes from three months ago, and nobody wants those kind of mashed potatoes. Know if it's working. And uh, again, toward this end, the idea is if you put together a website, it's kind of like build it and they will come. But does anybody care? Does anybody care about the website? Well, how do you know that? How do you know whether or not it's working? Well, if you've got student manager or if you've got SDC, you run a report uh, and you do the F9 key, the dashboard, as long as you're running B, 28 or newer, the new F9 dashboard allows you to see, for whatever time frame you specify, how many enrollments came in, how many of them were from the web, and it gives you the percentage. And you know you can monitor this and be able to see when your hits come in. And obviously, you can be as sophisticated as you want to be, but if you were doing uh, a big promotion last night on news that you had a, uh, a reference to you, you are, your URL, then you'd want to look at today's activity and see how many registrations came in today and how many from the web. And you can basically monitor your daily attendance and see whether you got a spike out of that particular promotional effort. So again, use the system to determine whether or not those are giving you results. And of course, choose to do more or less of that activity based on what your numbers are telling you. I mean, this is the work part, guys. Uh, there is nothing magical about it. And there are so many things you can do. You've got to kind of try things one at a time, measure the results, go in and take a look at the results. Uh, you can run a statistical report. 
statistics, names, demographic summary. And I'm going to have to exit and start that over again. Um, but you can run a report that will tell you for the particular day how many registrations came in during that day. So we go statistics, names, demographic summary. We want to do date registration added. Run it for a range of dates. We're going to say 03, 01, 09 to the present. And we want to sort it daily. And it'll tell us then by day how many people registered. So if you had a promotion somewhere in the first part of the month, you can see whether or not you got a spike in registrations that corresponded to the day of that promotion. One of the nice things about web promotion or electronic promotion is that you generally, and Daryl, you can maybe help with this, generally within 36 hours, if you haven't gotten a response, the likelihood is pretty slim you are going to get one because of the short-term nature of it. But yeah, the good news... 48. 48, OK. Okay. It tapers off after significantly after about 48. OK, but generally that would give you the idea of a three or four day time frame. You can look at the numbers and see whether or not uh, that activity gave you some results in there. OK, so we've talked about how you determine if it's working. Uh, back to, again, the more resources. We've already pumped uh, the search engine webinar that Daryl did. Other resources, and again, if you have not been subscribed to these two uh, free newsletters, marketingprofs.com and Marketing Sherpa, uh, Marketing Sherpa has a free newsletter. They offer conferences and seminars and webinars. Marketing Profs offer a free general newsletter, and then you can buy a subscription for like $150 a month uh, that gives you premium content. Uh, we, we, buy, we buy a subscription, and we think it's worth $150. Uh, I think we've gotten our money's worth out of that. Uh, but again, great resource for electronic marketing in general, not just website promotion. Um, but Daryl, uh, Lori, any other thoughts on general resources related to marketing? Certainly, uh, you know Daryl's website uh, SEO uh, marketing, which is in the. Uh, let me let me go ahead and and get that on there. Yeah, well, just let people know though. My website, I've decided. Uh, Somebody marked it one day at uh, Technorati is just another SEO blog. So I decided to print whatever I want. So you'll see a wide variety of uh, okay. from now on. But uh, I try to put up something about Internet marketing and search engine okay. optimization a couple times a month. And uh, usually it's information that people aren't familiar with. Okay. Um, I didn't really mean to go there. Let's go to... I have a, a list of a lot of free Internet marketing and SEO uh, resources in uh, two distinct sections. So it's internet-search-marketing.com. Internet here. Let's, let's do the internet-search-marketing. Now, that should give us a pretty good shot on that. There we go. And there's Daryl's website. Again, as a place to get you started, I'm going to add that to our resource list, Daryl. So I didn't mean to do that. Um, Lori, let's go ahead and start into the questions. We're at the question stage, and I'm, I'm kind of shorting uh, the questionnaires a bit. So. We don't have questions as much as we have people discussing things today. Oh, good, good. People saying that they link from conferences and from okay. groups that are sponsoring conferences back to their website, and that that's very effective. That they are doing a lot on Twitter, and I just have to tell you that Twitter is becoming almost a, a word when we first heard Google. Mm. Now we Google things. It's becoming a, an adverb, an action word type thing. Now we're getting tweeters and twitterers and twitterology mm. and tweetology, mm. <laughs> and mm. I'm seeing a lot of new words going with that today. Well, uh, can we do a quick shout out? How many people actually have uh, spend more than five minutes a day on Twitter, doing Twitter, or five minutes a week doing Twitter? Okay. Uh, any Twitter heads out there? Raise your hand if you're if you Twitter. No, uh, no, if, not Twitter heads, tweeters. Tweeters. Okay. <laughs> tweeters. Uh, uh, if Bummer. you tweet. 
If you tweet, raise your hand. Daryl, do you tweet? Daryl, Daryl. No, I do not tweet. You yet. do not. Yeah, I, I have not. I have not gotten into tweeting here. Now, of course, I'm on an old school cell plan that uh, does not. Uh, I don't have unlimited text messaging, so I'm, I'm way old school than that, you know. Um, but um, how many people, Lori? Looks about like ten percent of our group. Okay, so a fairly small number here. Uh, but again, I I didn't know. I, I'm my impression with that that was more of a social entertainment thing as opposed to a business. But certainly a, the idea of any time you can spell the name right in the old uh, advertising marketing business, if you spell the name right, uh, it, it gets you some benefit. Uh, so okay, well I think we're at that questions, other suggestions part. Uh, want to make sure we do a shout out to um, AceWeb regional meetings coming up. We're getting buzz on those now. We were nervous with uh, travel, but we've got decent attendance at both now. I uh, want to note that we've got, for AceWeb, we've got AceWeb training going on in uh, San Antonio. Uh, after our AceWeb Users Conference, the 19th and 20th, that's two days with Cheryl working on how to build, modify, uh, pretty up, sexy up, take advantage of AceWeb. So again, great opportunity for you there. Okay, Lori, I, I, I got carried away. Any other questions or buzz that, um, buzz that we're dealing with here? Well, we had a couple people tell us that as soon as they do an email blast, they see an increase in their web registrations and their okay. registrations in general. Uh, Elaine says she's been using that show up class very effectively. Good, good. Uh, well, there you go. So Elaine from Wooster Art, and so if we're looking for a uh, example of uh, of uh, now, we don't ha our next uh, our next. Uh, where's our stump the chump one? Oh, did I lose Keep that going. page? Keep going. Keep going. One more. Uh, uh, oh, lost the stump I the lost chump. the Stump the Chump. We've got, again, our last uh, webinar is Stump the Chump. And uh, uh, let me uh, let me actually, I think I've I can get it to here, it. I think. Well, I'll get to it off of this. We'll just go to the bottom. I don't know why. There it is. Uh, Stump the Chumps, it's going to be Wednesday, the April the 8th, the last webinar before uh, the annual conferences or the regional meetings. Uh, it's on the website. Uh, so uh, if you want to go there, uh, if you sign up for it, we haven't sent out the general notice of it yet, but you can pre-sign up if you go to events, webinars. Uh, we've got the Stump the Chumps. It'll be a little different format. We're going to be no real agenda. It'll be you as attendees will post the agenda. We'll have a panel of Aceware experts and uh, other people. And we'll look forward to a chance to see if we can answer your questions. So that'll be quite interactive. Um, and uh, we might even, uh, if you've got, if you want to be one of the chumps and want to nominate yourself to be on a panel, uh, send a note to Lori. We might experiment with uh, inviting in some customers to set in as, uh, uh, you know, as fellow chumps to kind of help us ace where people out. Well, uh, Lori, uh, uh, any other thoughts? Daryl, how, uh, I sure appreciate uh, you showing up at the last minute here. We kind of kicked this around, but you're joining us here, sir. Yeah, my pleasure. There's one thing I wanted to add that uh, website content, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure a lot of people are aware of this, but it's, not, uh, it's a nice add-on if you're not third-party references, student testimonials from uh, students who have enjoyed your courses are really important selling features uh, for creating trust and adding validity to uh, the value of what you're selling. Yeah, and again, that idea, customer spotlight, customer comments is a, is a great way to do that. So yeah, good point, Daryl. And uh, again, I think some good advice for us. Uh, in the business here. So, well, Lori, uh, questions? How are we doing? Are we are we done with the buzz here? People, uh, people seem to done. be. We're good. Well, we will look forward to um, in the April uh, the uh, the stump the chumps webinar, which is April eighth. Is it, Lori? No. Uh, I've forgotten. You took the slide away from me. <laughs> yeah, I took that slide away. Let's come back to that. Do 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 do. The website. April eighth, Wednesday, April eighth. 
And uh, otherwise, we would look forward to seeing you at the regional meetings coming up in May. So, Lori, thank you. Daryl, great to see you again. And uh, everybody else, have a great day. And um, good luck shoveling or, or sandbags up in North Dakota. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>